Minas, we all experience coincidences. Two things that happen that seem to have meaning together, but no causal relationship. Right. And so it's probably just, we say, a coincidence. Right. Because of your views of quantum physics, you think that a lot of these coincidences are not really coincidences and that there's something called synchronicity involved. Tell me about that. So let's take the word synchronicity. It's a Greek word. It means sin, which is with, and chronos, time. Mm -hmm. So it means with time, or some things that appear to be separate in time, they appear actually are related in time. That's synchronicity. So this is coincidences. Oh, I was walking by and something happened totally out of the blue. Somehow it reminds me of something else. That's the synchronistic experience. Or look at this, I run into you, Robert, walking down uh, this park and you shouldn't have been here. This is very strange. All of these are phenomena of synchronicity. In the view of quantum theory, um, the probabilities that are driving outcomes are actually when a, an event takes place in von Neumann's interpretation of quantum theory, which is perhaps the most established mm -hmm. view of quantum theory today, okay, following Bohr and von Neumann. It would say that a pathway in the set of possible outcomes actually reinforces other things to happen. So in a way, evolution is guided through these pathways. It's not totally random. Randomness has a lot to do with it, but there are some outcomes which are preferred. And those pathways would appear to be strange and synchronistic if you look at them from far away. But in fact, they're in a way built into the system. These pathways are occurring at the most micro level in quantum physics with particles and forces that are that are subatomic in nature. And you're telling me that the, the, the quantum physics at that level is affecting these macroscopic events of you and I meeting in the park. Uh, if we were going to meet the, the next day and have a conversation, we met in the park the day before, and that's a very coincidence, seems very coincidental of the millions we, of people. We have a physical theory which looks at it and says, well, it's not really as strange as it might appear from everyday experience. We have a physical theory, quantum theory. Now, in terms of consciousness, of course, consciousness in my belief system is primary. And in that worldview, it's possible to have synchronicity events. It's possible to have things so, from the future so let me, let me allow you affecting the past, for example. Let me allow you to have consciousness as fundamental. That's Correct. a whole other subject. We can debate we can it. Debate it all gonna, the time? I'm yeah. going to give it to you. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm handing it to you. You got it. Consciousness right. is fundamental. I still don't see how synchronistic events that don't seem to have meaning of any kind uh, are derivative from, from consciousness. They're just pure coincidences. Well, consciousness, one of its most fundamental characteristics is meaning. Right. You, uh, okay. Right? Okay. If you don't have meaning, I mean, what kind of consciousness is that? So there's meaning. If there's meaning, then the coincidence is meaningful in the sense that, oh, it's not random. The question is, is randomness absolute? Oh, okay. Or okay. maybe it's not. If it's not absolute, then right. meaning enters the, the door. Uh, okay, I, I think we're using the word meaning on two separate levels. Yeah. Your level of meaning, which is fine, it means that it's non-random. There's exactly. something happening that's generating this coincidence that's non-random. What I'm saying is, why would that be the case? Why should reality be structured to create these absurd coincidences? Let me turn the question around and say, why would reality be such that it's all random. And somehow, out of this randomness, we get order. R random is the default condition, in, in a sense, because, I mean, th that's the, the physical, the, the, you can't see purpose and intent, which are, which, which are human level ideas that we've built into the concept of personhood. And, and, and you're injecting that into the fundamental nature of reality and consciousness. I mean, that's a position. But that's a, that's a position you'd have to argue. It's a position, but I would say the other position that somehow meaning comes out of total randomness is also a position. 
I prefer my position because from the get-go, there seems to be order and evolution in the universe. Whereas if it's just total random, it still baffles me. I, I'm willing to give you that. In how you get meaning, okay, how you get I, I order, to, how you get I everything. give it to you right now, but why then derivative from that are these associations that are synchronistic, so-called, that, that Carl Jung talked about, that you see, a, you see a beetle here and a beetle there, and then at the same time that you're, you know, you're reading something in a book and you see a sign. I mean, there's so many possibilities in the world, infinite number of possibilities, that some of them will happen just statistically by force. They will happen statistically by force, but in such a universe, for these things to happen, you need a very, very long time. It is, if you like, the example that some people are giving of monkeys working for 10 to 35 years yeah, randomly, yeah. and you get Shakespeare. Yeah. Well, that's not how Shakespeare or Mozart, <laughs> right, right, right. Right. you know, it's not random product of randomness. And I would say the presence of life, let's just take a life, not, let's not even take neuroscience. The presence of life says that it's not just randomness and total chaos. Look at life. I mean, it all hangs together in a very amazing way. I, I see that. And it, but even if I, if I accept all of that, which I don't, but if I, if I, if I would, th I still am troubled by how that would generate, why that would generate, these events that we call synchronous or ESP or different things. They seem so frivolous. And if, to be the deep expression of the fundamental nature of consciousness, why is it so busy with these frivolous and, and uh, events that don't even happen that often? Well, maybe those frivolous events happen all the time, but we only pick them up because we're wearing certain kinds of glasses. Maybe our, the human mind blocks out all these other possibilities. Why? Because we function as a product of evolution, as human beings, homo sapiens, we can't grasp everything. We will go crazy. In fact, there are states, as you know, that alter states where people pretty much go crazy because they see so many different levels of reality that they cannot make any sense out of it. So there are synchronicity in the sense of many different levels of reality. Perhaps what we're doing with the mind or the human brain is filter out most of them. And once in a while, someone, one of those things seeps in and say, oh, it's a miracle or it's synchronicity, but maybe it is the very stuff of the universe and we're just picking up a particular aspect. But the ones we pick up seem, seem the silly ones. <laughs> or the funny ones. <laughs> yeah, the funny ones. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. I mean, that's, uh, you put some meaning out of it. <laughs> I have no idea if, if that's the case, if they're silly or not. But yeah, they seem to be strange and say, well, and, of course, you can never prove it. I mean, you're right in that sense. You can prove that those coincidences are deep or they're just random outcomes. There's a certain school of thought that says they're total random outcomes and you just happen to find them. I would say that deep in our guts, and I hate to say that <laughs> being scientific, but deep in our guts, we sort of know that ah, something's not right here. And I would say that perhaps Again, if you look at the brain as a filtering mechanism, we're picking up certain levels of reality.